Hello and welcome to Journeys in Transformation Analytics. Uh, I'm Amrish Tripathi. I run the analytics business for uh, Genpact. Uh, and in this series, we obviously talk to some of the world leading experts on, on various aspects and facets of uh, analytics and AI. Uh, today we have uh, Francesco Rulli, the CEO and founder of Querlo, a conversational AI company. And, and that is, as you were sharing last time, also the chief digital officer of the Duomo. Uh, Francesco, we've been chatting some, some great work about how you kind of got it started with the conversational AI side of things. And you shared with us also in the last episode about how did you kind of made that real for Duomo. Uh, but the question is when I talk to my clients, a lot of the times it's like, listen, I, I, this vision is great, right? That oh, I, I, there's so many systems, I don't want to deal with it. I want to, I want to talk to a computer, get the answers. And you know, all you're saying about this thing is fantastic. But how do you actually deliver the promise? Like, I mean, how would how would you get started on an effort like this? And what are the pitfalls to avoid? So um, based on our experience, so let me say we built over 14,000 chatbots, okay? Mm -hmm. We have worked for, uh, we have provided our technology to 10-year-old uh, uh, elementary uh, school students, all the way to corporations with 500,000 employees, right? Um, the, the number one step on my end, I give you my perspective, is mm -hmm. to understand each person in this organization, what they need or what they should need and they are not looking for and how fast they need that, right? So what does the CEO, the CFO, the CMO need to run their leadership better? And where are they wasting their time? All right. And, so, and, and how do you do that? Start it up. Is it do you do some sort of an experience-based design session? Do you kind of do a survey? How do you collect that? Yeah. Well, every company is different, and it depends also on the size. Uh, I like to use our own chatbots, for example, to communicate with people in privacy, because people behave very differently with a machine than another human. Okay. Yes. There is a tendency to judge people based on the way that they behave, their energies, their looks. So when you are an extrovert, when you are well-dressed, when you are, you just change the behavior of the person on the other side. Instead, if you provide this middleware, this machine, then you do have the room for an executive or a junior worker to express what they need, also where their frustrations are, and also to express what they don't know. Because right. it doesn't necessarily mean because you are a C-suite kind of guy, you already know everything, right? right. And there is plenty of uh, executives that need reskilling. Not to say in our last research for post-COVID, 32% of people are more interested in reskilling than actually mental health or work from home tools. Wow. But because objectively, once you come home, you realize you need reskilling. So it's much easier to communicate about those aspects about your business with, in my opinion, with a chatbot. It, I don't say it should be just a chatbot, but it's at least as a second opinion. So the first thing is to give them a platform to express their needs. The second part is to give them education about what we can do today with artificial intelligence and with advanced analytics and provide them an easy access to those tools. So let's say you just had dinner, something comes to your mind, you want to access that report, but you don't want to open a file with 60 pages, you want to grab your cell phone, and just like if you were going on Google to Google the price of uh, a paint, now you can simply ask your digital assistant information on sites on that matter. If the digital assistant does not have the information, right. the question mark will be delivered to the person in charge, who will, in the morning, or possibly in real time, because maybe there is a time difference, start working on that insight. So, so, so that I, in this example, them. Francesco, that I, it's really interesting, but won't the executive then get, okay, I don't have the information, I'm not going to use it anymore. I mean, how do you kind of, how do, how do, how do you kind of essentially lose, keep the interest of the executive uh, in that journey? So uh, the, the, you know, we hope that the company has already gathered enough data. So there is a baseline that you want to start with. But I'm saying in the worst case scenario, there is a certain level of machine learning being executed. So I always look at things from the worst case scenario. So mm -hmm. if I don't know something, 
the, the artificial intelligence is supposed to let you know and I take notes and the, the team can spend the time to develop this new insight. Got if it. we know something, then we save a tremendous amount of time. Right. Usually chatbots save uh, right off the bat 50% of the time uh, of the company workers simply because uh, you, there is an access and there is no need of emails, requests, uh, preparing. All right? So there is a direct access to the insights. But really, that also means there is another 50% of questions that are not answered. Right. And some of them, they are not pertaining to the topic. So it's okay, you can discard them. Like some others instead are very important. Like uh, one of the things, so going back to the Duomo experience, when people asked Michelangelo, how are you? We had to have a meeting and decide how we should answer in behalf of someone who's not around, right? right. So just the fact that we allow someone to ask a question that means also we allow someone to build a new set of insights. Got it. And if they're not available, we might build them. If they are available, then we satisfy their expectations. On the other side, there's also a level of transparency where those dashboards, or let's say the role of the chatbot, is to give access to data in real time so that it doesn't necessarily mean that tonight uh, the numbers are the same than tomorrow morning, simply because also the people who have been accessing this data has actually been uh, bring, bringing new, uh, new insight organically into this data itself so that uh, basically our experts and the analytics experts, so they can actually provide uh, a different perspective on this matter. And, and, and once you understand the needs and you kind of build that, tell me a little bit about what are the two or three steps of building the, 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 the chatbots. All right, for us, uh, once it is that, uh, we define uh, who is going to be in charge of providing us uh, the, uh, the most important part of building a chatbot is the, the questions, right? So uh, good questions lead to good data. Mm. Bad questions lead to questionable data, all right? So once we define uh, the content, uh, either it's educational or research purpose, or it's customer service purpose, whatever is the content, we also decide uh, how the conversation should be structured. It, for starting from, is it casual? Is it formal? Is it uh, a short, uh, deterministic uh, ABC choice? Or we go open answer. We define uh, the intents, the amount of intents. Going back to Michelangelo, now we are about 60, 65 intents. The goal is to get to 200 intents. How many utterance for each intent do you want? 20, 50, 60, 70. The more intents, the more utterances the more specific the conversation becomes. So do you essentially, do you organize the basically the, the tone, intent, and, and, and yes. the options almost like in a tree, and then that you pop, start populating the data? Is that kind of how it yes. works? Exactly, exactly. Got it. Got All right. It. Educating a chatbot or an artificial intelligence entity is the equivalent of sending your children to school. Yeah. So you're taking this baby who is just born, and they tell you it's healthy, but they can't tell you how smart the baby is until mm -hmm. you start educating the baby. Right. And the really intelligence comes into training. So A is automation, I is intelligence. So the more efforts you put, the more intense, the more utterances, the more sophisticated the connections between the data, and the more sophisticated and pleasant are the dashboards and the insight analytics, the more insight back you have, and the executives can actually work with the data to improve the experience, to improve the conversation, the tone, and everything else. Yeah, absolutely. So, Francesco, no, thank you so much for kind of coming and sharing. I mean, the, this whole no, this whole topic around conversational AI and and how would you kind of create chatbots to consume information, and how, I mean, and some of the examples you shared from Duomo, as well as kind of the work that you've been doing with your clients, as and as well as kind of what it takes. Fascinating. It's it's a new area. Uh, it's, it's well, it's it's been a, around, but I don't think it's it's it probably it's the, the the best is probably ahead of it in in a lot of ways. Uh, so I, I I really hope a lot of our listeners uh, find it useful and just at least thought provoking as to this is one of the things they should potentially be thinking about uh, as they start thinking about uh, executive communication, as they think about reporting dashboard, whenever you're pre putting in information that needs to be get consumed as this is one of the aspects that's probably worth thinking about. So thank you so much, Francesco. Really appreciate all the expertise and, and, and for you to come over and share this thing with us. Thank you. Very appreciate it.